Well, it's an absolutely gorgeous day. Cold, but bright and clear. The sun's warm. So I flipped the chassis over because I want the dimensions for the uh, A-pillar feet locating. So first thing to do is I'm just rechecking that nothing's twisted and warped. So I've got it up on trestles. I've got it set between the bump stops, which is possibly not the most accurate position. But we're not looking for uh, thousands. So I set it, set the spirit level across the chassis at that point, and it's directly opposite these. So the position of that's the um, shock absorber locator to the top of the chassis. Same one there. Set this end up while driving some wedges in underneath to jack it up until that is absolutely level. And I've then taken the same position effectively over up to the side uh, for those with a keen eye you can see the bubble in the middle there so i'm happy that that chassis is not twisted or certainly the points at which the wheels are hung that bit of the chassis is straight the middle can be all over the shop and i could drop a, a measure across the middle but i don't want to there's, there's no signs of it being twisted so my next bit is i want to measure the whole centers between those two mounting holes there are and it's making one over there and then uh reproduce it on my jig the only thing i'm a little bit unsure about is what height that the bulkhead stands at at the moment it's going to be determined by lining those up and the whole centers on the doors which i would have thought would be fairly uh, accurate and what I have discovered is these if these bolts are I think they're they're obviously an imperial size, I can't do the calculation, but it's they're just short of eleven mil diameter and they're going through what appears to be just over half inch diameter hill. So there's a degree of wiggle room that way, well always basically. Um and then as I understand things, you stick spaces in that position to shunt shunt the bulkhead forwards and backwards and there is a degree of play on the brackets which mount on these three holes come up and catch the foot wells and that the movement allows you to basically cant the bulkhead forwards and backwards and there's a little bit of movement up and down but what there isn't any any adjustment on is the width now I've read, I've read stories of guys fitting bulkheads using um, ratchet straps to stretch stretch it and jacks between it just to get it to line up to get the bolt through, which is, uh, yeah, it's all doable, and if that's what you've got to do, that's what you've got to do. But it'd be nice to get it something like before we start that, wouldn't it? I'll waffle on. Interesting to see that there's there are signs of rust, despite how many bloody coats of rust converter I put on it it's too cold to do anything with it at the moment but uh, some of it is that was on well, you can see that for the sunlight so that's actually under the coating it's not got any worse it's sealed but you can see here the rust staining so there's a water trapping point there um, cross members sealed up all right that looks still gone all right I've obviously not done enough around here so that needs another going over. But I'm actually going to paint the Coralus uh, chassis paint on it, which says it can go straight onto rust, so given that it's already been treated once, I don't think that'll need it. But it's going to be a brush paint job. I can't spray it out here. Right. So the next job was fit these brackets so that they are, the sides of them are vertical. So if the chassis is horizontal across, that's a vertical plane going up. And then I'm through the uh, square hole and through the round window. Uh, so you can see nice round number, 64 and a quarter. So all I've got to do now is when I rig these up on the, on the jig, make sure that that dimension over the outside is 64 and a quarter. And that they, that face, is parallel to that face and ideally vertical otherwise i'll be driving along in the 
in front of the car will be on a skew. Um, next problem I've got is working out. Uh, do I need to do anything? No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these whole alignments and the door spacing for the hinges to set my distance from the underside of the assembly down for that bolt because I've got no datum to work to on this because these have been off and they definitely aren't on the they put, they're not put back on at exactly the same level but they're near enough but yeah there's not much of a datum to work to but that should give us a sporting chance well, I'll just uh, this is only holding lightly with a screw that's not held in, that's just on a magnet. What I'm what looking at is this um, suspect part. And you can see how the curve doesn't follow up. Checking the uh, sizes from here across, which is the footwell. Um, this has got to come in that gap. So it's basically got to follow that line down. Uh, the footwell, the, the new one is it's only a couple of mil different to this one. Although this one is in slightly skew width. Uh, it's been changed, but they've changed it to that point. So that's the new line there. You can see with a fair amount of sealer. So uh, I've got to work out what I'm going to do with this. Um, basically, I've just chopped the sides out just to get it offered up. And it's position in relation to that hole I know I needed to come up about a quarter of an inch so that's what I've set the top of that to and even that is still fouling me on here um, and that gives me the hot bottom hole position in relation to these holes being right on the door so I've got to work out what I'm going to do um, I don't want to start chopping and changing this bit but I can cut down that seam, the fold there, bring it into proximity and then basically weld that to that and then that to the new, to the to its new profile. Um I ain't decided yet. Anyway, once I've once I've got that sort of I know the bottom is actually right. So I can now set up a jig, something off here with the bolts going through to pin this foot in and then use the foot as the alignment piece at the bottom and then take the whole centers from here well it's actually not the whole centers it's from the uh the vertical upstand from it but once that that thing's located i can measure across then and set the other one up that's my plan i think this has been the uh or well, this part of it is probably a, it's the bit that matters most because it gives you the alignment of the doors and the bulkhead to the chassis. And B, you're working with parts which may bond with different manufacturers. Um, obviously, they don't match, which is why uh, classic bulkheads make their own. Um, and as we saw in one of the earlier videos, the whole centres for the hinges on the generic A-pillar don't match the doors by something in the region a quarter of an inch um the, the, the fundamental problem if i having massaged this a little bit if i make this match that curve which is not million miles off now you want you on the eighth of an inch gap now but if you look at we know that that whole the whole centre is at the bottom. Yeah, I bloody see it there, which is where the bottom hinge fits. We know that that point there to the point on here needs to be getting on for three sixteenths less than that point on it. So if you like, if I if I as long as I shove this part through, so that position on the inside hole to this position is 3 16 up oh, hole centers should match in order to do that that curve has to sit all the way up here and in reality it wants to come down a bit and the only way it can come down is either a massage this or i massage the back one 
I am more inclined to massage the black one. Because I know it's not, you know, it, it's slightly less seen. Whereas to start pissing around, pissing around, nicking through the back edge of that flange and moving it in and then re-welding it on. Whereas with this one, because it's got to come up, I'm thinking I can nick through the corner, flex it up, put it all in position and then try and run a bead or a series of tacks down to join it back up. Yeah. Obviously, I need to get that right to get that right. I've now got it. It's sitting reasonably adjacent. It's still got to come in a little bit. Uh, I've verified that the sizes on this are exactly the same as the one I've got. But yeah, there's uh, a few too many moving parts and uh, <laughs> too many clamps in the way. But I, want, I don't, before I chop this bit off, the, uh, the outer bit here, to then weld it around here, I need it for the alignment of the holes. So uh, that will send it in a little bit, but it's fouling here, so waffle, waffle, waffle. Well, we're uh, half past nine at night. I was still pissing about with this uh, corner section here. What I've ended up doing is butchering the join there because I can then tack it in place once the uh, mating part's up and then seam it down the outside. So it'll be good as new, but to a slightly different radius, lower down. Uh, I've got it all within now about an eighth of an inch. Um, better than it was, it was at a quarter. Um, I've decided what I'm going to do is take the footwell out. So I've just drilled, drilled out the uh, spot welds. And a few to do down the bottom there when I find them. Uh, that way I can fit the footwell, the new one in. Um, drop this down and then just make sure that this edge... It's parallel with that edge because the footwells are square, so there's no reason why they shouldn't be, or certainly within the confines of the flange on the far end. I don't know whether you can see that. Yeah, it's got a, about five eighths of an inch flange, and I just want to make sure that this edge is up tight to the pillar before I spot weld, spot weld that end in. So that's the plan. Um, gonna give it a break now. Uh, I think the neighbours must be wondering what the hell's going on. Crazy Land Rover renovations next door kind of job. If you're watching, uh, Graham, <laughs> my apologies. Anyway, that's uh, that's about as much as I've managed today. It's uh, I've been at it quite a few hours, but I was loath to do anything detrimental to this, but I couldn't see another way around it without either chopping that pressing up, which is far more visible than this which by the time it's finished and the dashboard's in, there's not a lot you can see. Yeah. And I, I'm fairly sure now that when I've welded this in, I might have been a couple of mil up. It, I, it's The bottom of it is just a touch too high, and I think it's just slightly on the piss, but it's enough to throw that curve out in relation to the other one. Anybody who's worked fitting curves knows that you don't need much of a misalignment to make them look damn awful. Uh, so it begs the question whether the other one's the same. I did take, you know, took my time doing it, made sure that the position along each at each end was around about the same position on that curve coming round. Um, but, you know, it don't take much. Anyway, um, it's a Land Rover. I'm sure it'll all go together and fit when it's done. Once I drop this leg down, I've got to shuffle the whole jig back towards me so I can reposition myself at the far end. And then I've got to work out the centres for the mounting feet and then basically make any adjustments at the top end that I need to. Well, what's the plan? So that's the first hoffering up of the uh, passenger footwell. Uh, main issue I've got now is just some clearances. There's a, <clears throat> mine had had new footwells put in some 20 odd, 30 odd years ago. The original ones have got a, a downturn here and to sit it over that, I've had to nibble a bit of that out, but I've also 
found that I've got this bloody, my bracket that's holding it is, is fouling that. So I'm going to cut a trough out of that so that, that return will drop into it. That will enable me to close that gap up. I've got um, uh, this alignment here is looking good. This is workable. I've got a gap here because some prep with the grinder ground out too much. Um, and I've just got to work out how to basically stitch this in, check the alignment, and then basically tack all this side together. And my main issue is getting a measurement from the centre of that hole across to the centre of that one. So I'm going to go and have my lunch now and uh, come back with a vengeance. I'm pretty sure, based on the sizes of the footwells, if I cut that footwell out and put the other one in, and then drop the pillar down so it's approximately like this, I'm pretty sure it'll give me the centre, so I don't need to worry about it too much. But it'd be nice to get them there. Uh, I'd like some little brackets off the bottom of here, catching the bolt, put one in, and then measure across, get the next one in, and actually fit the bracket. And then it's just a case of joining that point to the bracket on the other side. It's looking a lot like a porcupine. I need to get rid of some of these uh, clamps. So now these panels are in, I can weld that one back into position. So that's two clamps off it. Um, and then it won't sink as quick. <laughs> well, it's hard to define. Um, the plan as it is progressing, I've removed the rest of the rusty bits, which is the driver's side footwell <clears throat> and the uh, remains of the A-pillar that was there. Um, knowing on this one that that curve matched the A-pillar that came off in relation to its position. Um, I've cleaned up this strengthening piece on the inside, took all the remains of the um, footwell out. But as you, the <clears throat> more astute of you will notice, it's been trimmed. I mean, that's that's looking a lot like a Swiss cheese. This one, I got a load of corrosion on it, and I just thought, well, it'd be easier cut it through and then weld a piece on to the to the pattern, which is basically out and up. So the next, my next job is basically offer up the footwell um, because I know I'm going to have to trim a piece out of here again to get it to seat and uh, basically get an idea. Um, I want to be able to measure the, the, the width between the feet and I might as well have the footwell in while I'm doing it because it helps align everything. Um, I can't weld, I can't put this in and together until I've finished making up the captive bracket and nuts which sit in here, which looks a lot like that. So I've bought a generic part, drilled the extra hole because apparently you know, whoever it is all makes Brit Park or whatever. They only do two holes there. So I've drilled the third one. Uh, glued on some nuts on the back and that basically sits into the hills and into those holes. So I figured I can use a socket on an extension to drive those in. So... That'll be in, it's only just cooled down, so that's why I can handle it now. So that'll go in, in the process of doing that, that clamps that face to that, yeah. And then I want to basically check the bottom line of that footwell, it wants to be parallel with the uh, steel. Because as you can see, it's got a slight pull, pulled round slightly. The footwell's only held in with a clamp and one... Uh, self tapper down the bottom there. So I want to do the same that side and basically get a straight edge between this line and the back of the other footwell. Uh, <coughs> currently running out of bits of steel that are long enough though. In fact, I haven't got any. So it might have to be a broom handle or something sweet. All right, it's a uh, beer o'clock and it's Friday evening and I'll be brutally honest, I've had enough. What I have been impressed of, I've never used them before. Um, I mean, forget the brand. I picked these off eBay, flap discs. Um, 
Jesus, you can shift some material with them things. I mean, they don't last forever. But uh, when you're trying to grind away uh, a welded flange and you've cut it down, all that's left is the, the, the point. Stick one of them flap discs on and just whiz over each of the inside of the points and then peel it back. It's a hell of a lot faster than um, the old hard stones that I used to use. So that's my selection. I think I've got another four or five of them left, but they're all getting a bit worn now towards the outside. These bits, these were great. And I bought these to replace them. Um, they're a damn sight harder. Um, these were lovely for taking the paint off. They just chew through the steel. Anyway, I'll waffle on. Bring you back tomorrow. Right, well, I've spent a degree of time messing about getting that mounted. So that actually pulls now that panel back to the inside structural piece of that. So it's one less piece flapping about. Um, I've then got the, if I come round to this side, That's the, sets the height for the whole centers between there and down at the bottom there. So my next, next issue is I want now to make a little bracket up to come down off my framework with a hole in for an M12. It's not, it's not metric, but it'll do. Um, and with that hole lined up, I'll then tack the bracket on, onto the frame that will go and give me the whole position for there and then I can go measure across. Now I've got on my chassis, the best I can measure it is 59 and 5 eighths of an inch between the whole centers. Well, I've had four hours on it today. And aside from the fact I can't actually feel my feet now because the cold's got so far up. Um, I've got the bracket mounted on this side, welded in. And, the, and a, a piece of touching milling clump, so 12 mil stood in through. I've mounted the second one. And uh, next job is basically to trim the end of the A pillar so it matches up with the upper section here. I've got to trim all the excess off from my um, reinforcing structure. And probably got to trim the bracket that that fits on because it looks, if you look down it, this piece here is a bit borderline, so I just nib nibble the end of that off as well. Then we'll put the A pillar up and see if we can actually get it all lined up. And it wants to be plumb that way. And uh, I've got to set the spacing for the bottom foot protruding out. I should, I've messed up. I should. Have, I want some uh, M12 studding instead of these. Uh, they're only threaded at the ends. Then I could pour a locking nut on to set that distance. But uh, we shall see. Anyway, I've had enough now. Um, got to take the dog out again. Um, it's just. It's just a case of. I want to get all the corners positioned now uh, before I weld anything up. For the simple reason, there's. And it's got an inclination to want to twist. And it's only once I've got the foot wells in and secured that that twist is going to be resisted. Um, so I want to make sure when they go in, everything's in the plane I want it to end up at. And then we've got a bit of work to do, basically. Once that, once the foot wells are in and we're solid and the pillars are in, we've got to do these internal corners. We've got a bit of work to do here. We've then got to do... Oh, I'll come out around the other side. It's not working as shoebox. I've then got to fill these gaps <coughs> and then put the top rail. Well, put the top rail and then fill the gaps here, here, and there. Uh, do something with that Swiss cheese so it's uh, pinned down and holds holds the. Uh, that's that's part of the solution. Or the footwell wants to go that way. I've got to bring the footwell back, line it, line up this lot, and then these, if you like, just pipe, provide a bit of bracing on it. Uh, and obviously, when I come to do that side, I've got to rebuild half of that bit. 
Yeah, it's uh, everything's taking time because it's to put it on, take it off. I mean, just the little brackets that hold the bloody um, door stays in. There were two hours buggering about with that because uh, <laughs> being a precision welder, I managed to weld the uh, the nuts. I was welding the nuts onto the internal bracket, so I put the bolts through to line everything up, welded them in, and managed to weld the bolt through. Good penetration on those two, so we had to drill them out and start again. But you live and learn. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not despondent, but it is taking a bloody age. Chatting to uh, Anthony, the nice young man, he uh, says on average you're looking at three weeks for start to finish. That's making the parts and fitting them. Well, I I thought, well, let's see if I can do it in three three weeks with the parts provided. I'm at two weeks at the minute. So, you know, there's a fair bit of finishing off to do. I mean, just cutting all these holes out of the top rail, which is sat up here, and then getting that positioned, marking on my ends, this end. I can't on that end, so I'm just going to copy it. Um, I've got to check that the flaps fits, fit the orifices. Can't see why they wouldn't, but, you know, I've got to then fit these bits here that i've made and i know that they're not a, a sliding fit there is a, there's an interference so i've got to do a bit of tr localized trimming yeah it's all all little tiny niggly bits but uh i mean the one thing that does strike me is the uh holes for screwing the stuff on to the dash um they all need reinstating and i've no bloody idea where they were because the panels were knackered i've kept the parts they're there so well, I'll be taking a measurement from one corner and another corner and that sort of thing. Anyway, I waffle on. Thank you very much. So that's the driver's side footwell hoffered up. Uh, I've got one minor error where it needs to sit above that. But I might actually just put a new piece in underneath and weld it in later. Because it's pretty snotty. Um, overlap is about the same as the other side. got a same problem I've had when I fitted those I'm not going to match on these curves so I've got to come up with some way of uh, getting over that I mean uh, arguably if I shove the footwell over it'll bring this bit over but then this bit goes too far and my whole centre at the bottom is already set. So it's just a case of fine tuning everything at the minute. Uh, taking the line down the back of the footwell. If you take that line, it should should be a straight line and there's about, uh, it's just under half inch, about three eighths of an inch where this one, the driver's side goes in and the other one goes in as well. So, a dr the right distance out at the centre, but they're not quite square to everything. Um, I don't think it really matters, but it's uh, been nice to get it something like, and it's close enough. So yeah, these uh, it's just getting fiddling around. That point's fixed, and the bottom point's fixed, so there's not really a lot. I want that face at 90 degrees to that face, so that the pillar doesn't look twisted from above, which is where we are at the moment. So yeah, it's, it's a case of um, to the ne me measuring it to the nearest bulkhead. <laughs> anyway, time for a cup of tea because uh, that's been a bit of a wrestling match. You can always tell by the number of clamps involved. And I've run out. Oh, and we had to chop this one off again. Found out you can't get the foot footwell for the driver's side in if you're supporting it there. So that had to come out and then. Yeah, just a bit of a wrestling match because you've got to get a flan one flange behind this one. You've got to get it sat above this one. And then that one's just pissing you about in the first place. And then you obviously want this return edge parallel with that. So the only way I could get physically get it in was to take the uh, A-pillar off, get it all wiggled in, then put the A-pillar back up to it. Which is not so bad because I've got the corner pinned there. So it's kind of like, You've got at least one datum. 
So yeah, I don't know what's happened. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the issue was with my bulkhead, but I know that the other A pillar was all bent up. Yeah, just look at this bit. Hang on, this section here. It's been knocked about a fair bit to get it to fit, and I suspect it's new. Um, I don't know. Horse. Anyway, uh, a cup of tea and then uh, I'll have a way up and see what wants pinning. I think we'll start, need to start tacking stuff on now because uh, if I leave everything too wishy-washy, everything seems to fit. And then when you actually make the final fit up, it don't. All right, well, after uh, a considerable amount of messing about, I've reached the point at which I've got it as aligned as I'm going to with respect to the pillars. I've fitted the footwells with some self-tappers, so they're squared out. I've messed about with the corner positions, and they're adjustable back to suit. So I'm now welding on the foot for the A-pillar. Um, so a couple of decent size, um, the three-eighths of an inch spot welds. <coughs> Unfortunately, the man operating the drill drilled one on the wrong spot. So I'm getting better at plugging holes. <laughs> um, so the plan is now to basically fit that. I've pre-drilled a load of spot weld points uh, to spot weld it on at that side. And then I'm going to work my way across, tack it in, and then do the same from this side. Um, I've reached a point where it's basically, if it ain't aligned now, it ain't ever going to be. Um, the whole centres are on mine, five-eighths of an inch wider than standard it's had new outriggers which i think allow for about a quarter of an inch error on those so it's it's still half inch so it's at the top end of its spec anyway i've matched it to what i've got on the chassis because that's basically where it's got fit um but that has thrown quite a few other bits out um having a long chat with the nice young man at classic bulkheads we are i think we share the view that by that position at the bottom being five eighths of an inch wider across the pair, it's just thrown the angles out on the curves. In addition to which, I'd, I've mounted these bits on the inside, maybe not as accurately as they could have been. That's not helped. So there's just a case of buggering about to get those right, but uh, we're on with it now.
like cool down on it. Yeah. On account of being uh, lacking in confidence a little bit, bit of an offering up with Junior. Um, we've got the whole centres on the bottom, smack on there, great. One uh, chassis to bulkhead bracket on the driver's side lines up fine. On the passenger side, we're about a quarter of an inch out. So I'll probably drill a new set of holes, which are these two. They just need to be a little bit over. Um, so yeah. We can get on and do the rest of it now.